The thing you're most excited about is hearing about treatment. All of us want to know how we're going to fix this. Well, the good news is in the last 10 or 15 years, the treatment for CML has been dramatically improved with the development of a group of drugs called the tyrosine kinase inhibitors or the TKIs. Just briefly, in the past, people with CML, if with standard treatments, uh, had an average survival of about four years. About 25 years ago or so, 20, 25 years ago, we developed a drug called interferon, which was used to treat people and actually extended people's life uh, an average of two years, so up five, six years uh, survival. And along came the tyrosine kinase inhibitors were actually developed uh, to attack that BCR able complex that I went through and went through more detail than you probably cared to know. Uh, but I went through so you would understand that this drug was, th these drugs were developed to specifically attack that complex, try to reverse that, and actually reverse the chromosomal change and therefore reverse the disease or put to arrest the disease. The tyrosine kinase inhibitors, the most common and the first one is imatinib, was developed. There are two other drugs that uh, were uh, approved uh, in recent years, uh, the satinib and the and nilotinib, and don't want you to worry too much about the names, but those are called the second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors, and there are newer ones to be developed for people to develop resistance to the first few. With those drugs, it really has been turned into a chronic disease. Uh, people are, well over half of people are living 10, 15 years. These drugs have only been used for about 15 years, so we don't know how long this can go. But of patients who received the original treatment with uh, imatinib, uh, now over 12 years ago, 80% um, of them are still in remission in chronic phase, very few having progressed to acute leukemia. It appears by uh, trials testing imatinib versus the two newer drugs that those are actually slightly better and most patients now are starting on one of the other newer drugs from the beginning. Uh, how good they will be, we don't know, but they appear to be very, very promising with only a few percent of patients, uh, less than two percent of people progressing in the first three to five years uh, to anything that approaches acute leukemia. In the past, bone marrow transplant was used as the primary treatment to try to cure patients but with the advent of the tyrosine kinase inhibitors and their success rate, bone marrow transplants now being used for people who either develop resistance to these drugs or have resistance up front to these drugs or progress on these drugs and do not respond to a second uh, level drug. When you're first diagnosed, you may start on a drug called hydroxyurea to try to suppress your white blood cell count while a diagnosis is confirmed, but very soon you'll transition to a tyrosine kinase inhibitor or one of the TKIs. These drugs are very well tolerated. They're pills that you take either once or twice a day. You do need to take them. If you don't, they don't work. Uh, and so it's very, very important for you to take your drug and do not miss it because if, when you have periods of taking your drug and missing your drug, there's a higher risk of developing resistance over time. Your doctor will follow your progress by initially checking blood counts, but very soon your blood counts will normalize. In the first two to three months, they usually normalize. Uh, over time, the Philadelphia chromosome will gradually disappear and your doctor will be following you primarily with the PCR testing that I mentioned earlier and they will check those approximately every three months and see that level go down and down and down and they'll share those results with you. That's very exciting and hopefully over a period of six to twelve months that number will get very very low and maybe down to zero. That is the major way of following your disease. It's the major prognostic factor of seeing not necessarily how rapidly it goes down but the fact that it does continue to go down and hopefully it gets down to what we call a three log reduction. I won't dare to try to explain log functions to you because for many of you that was many years ago in school, but uh, we have measurements of where we want you to be at different points in your treatment and where we want you to be at one year, where we want you to be at two years. And if for some reason you don't meet those milestones or you reach those and your, your PCR test starts to go back up, there's additional testing we do to look for mutations or changes that uh, are associated with resistance and whether we need to move to a different drug or whether we need to consider transplant if that happens. For the majority of patients that will never happen, but for the few for whom that does happen, there are alternative treatments such as a newer drug called penetinib that's been developed for people with, with certain resistance mechanisms or possibly moving forward with a blood and marrow transplant at that time. For patients who are treated with the TKIs, they're generally well tolerated. You do have some dietary restrictions with some of the drugs. You have a few medications you need to avoid. Some of the medicines that are used for peptic ulcer disease or for reflux, 
uh, so-called so PPI, so protein pump inhibitors, can have some impact. So ask your doctor about your or, and or your pharmacist actually about the, the particular drug you're on and what restrictions you might have in either diet or medications and if there are certain things you need to avoid um, uh, when you're on these medications. They can make these medications less effective and the last thing we want to do is do anything to uh, uh, get in the way of you having an excellent response to what's an exciting and, and, and very, very, very effective group of drugs. So when you talk to your doctor about CML, uh, make sure you let them know any side effects you have. We talked about more common things like rash, a little bit of swelling or holding on the fluids. If you have any GI upset, let your doctor know. They can help you deal with these side effects. Uh, if necessary, they can change to one of the other drugs. There are lots of things that can be done, but we have an exciting and interesting and a very effective group of drugs. And you're really in control here. You have to take your medications. Uh, you have, if you have problems with your medication, work with your doctor and find something you can take. But this is a disease that we think we really can help you have a very normal life, and we want to help you do that. You help us by telling us anything, you, any problems you have, and if you have any issues taking your medicines, let us. But above all, help us find a drug that you can take on a regular basis and help us turn this into a chronic disease that you can have a normal life.